Oh, I forgot. I'm safe. This isn't human hair. back to my channel is Tyra here with another struggle review here to give you guys my in-depth review of the new film available on Hulu bad hair I enjoyed this movie and I got all of the references I want to give an in-depth review because for one if you if you're not a woman a black woman you may not have gotten all the references. You weren't, you know, where he's in a, a black home. Some of these things might have went over your head. But for those of us who were, but it's okay if you weren't. That's why I'm here. What did I think of this movie? Hmm. You know what? Before we get into that, I need you guys to drop down and like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more of me. I'm going to give you guys a minute to do that and then we're going to come back and we're going to discuss all things bad hair. So from the opening scene right away, they like jabbed us in the face with what they wanted to come across, exactly what this message was. First of all, we'll, we're hit with Pull your strings and I'll wink at you. I'm your puppet pal, pal, pal. Puppets control. And we see a young, vibrant, little black girl like we all, some of us, <laughs> once were. And we see the infamous perm. We see the perm. Some of us have experience with the perm way before. This little girl looked like she had to be all of eight, nine, maybe 10. No, some of us were getting perm, chemical, death, creamy crack <laughs> spread on our scalps from the age of three. And that's when we get those, you know, messages of, you know, I used to have good hair, but it all fell out because my mama put a perm on my hair when I was younger. That is a real thing. That is not just something we say, but we see her getting this perm in we see another little girl who I was thinking, you know, oh, this is her sister. And we see a complex, a lighter skinned sister, a longer straight haired sister. But once we go to wash this out, you know, it's burning out. You know, can we get it out already? Well, no, we, we wanted to take, we need to leave it in there to the brink of death that you're about to, you know, scratch your own skin off of your face. And you're, it's so hot. Cause we want it bone straight. But while trying to get this bone straight, we go to wash it out and we see those horrible chemical burns. I am all too familiar with a chemical burn. And we see already that she is scarred. Not only did this little girl, Anna, not want this perm, but we see already that she knows who she is. She's practicing, you know, being, you know, a, a radio DJ. You know, we're going to come back right after this commercial. She has some circle of this is what I want to be when I grow up. Not this, not this perm, but we, you know, we go to wash it out. Chemical burn. <sighs> scarring. We have early childhood scarring, not only of the physical scarring from the perm, but the scarring of, you know, hey, I'm washing it out. You know, maybe you'll blend in with the family now. Maybe people will really think you are my sister if we get this hair a little bit straighter because right now it's nappy. Scarring. So we have this chemical burn in her growing up referencing straightening hair as a bad thing already. Get into get it. Get deeper, you know, into the film. We get into grown up Anna, 1989 Anna. And Anna is looking for a job. Well, it looks like she's looking for a job, but she already has a job at Culture. And the interview that she was on wouldn't even hear her out. Didn't want to hear her ideas. They saw Anna and was like, next. 
we go back to our current job and it's the whole video countdown world. Now, if you are an 80s, 90s kid, you know all too well about those video countdowns that, you know, Jody Watley and those, you know, Yo MTV raps with um, Fat Five Freddy and um, it's just so, it was so many countdowns. Countdowns were such a thing. It kind of burnt out, you know, towards the end and leveled off at 106 in Park, but went on YouTube. You had to go home and watch and wait for your favorite video to come on. And Anna has these brilliant ideas of how to make this better. Not only does she have idea, but Anna wants to host. She wants to be on screen. She wants to promote, you know, and not only show her idea, but I want to be in the forefront. At Culture, we're not given an opportunity to do that. Now, we are introduced to change already occurring in 1989. And we're being pulled into more of a demographic and a more approachable look. Whereas in, you know, <clears throat> 60s and 70s, it was all about the Afro. It, you know, it was all about your natural, beautiful Afros and natural hair and braids and beads. 1989, no. On into the 80s, we trying to straighten this out. We're going for a certain look. Currently, the company the culture is downsizing and changing and turning into the cult. <laughs> Real on the nose. We're the cult now. We are introduced to Zora, Miss Vanessa Williams, giving us all of her Wilhelmina Slater isnessness. Get into it. If you did not watch Ugly Betty, go look it up and watch it now. Love her. But we see who was currently in charge, you know, the producer. She's, you know, very earthy, very natural, long dreads, beautiful woman versus Vanessa William, who's taken over. And this woman is, you know, stepping down, straight hair, fair skin, the look. Now, the whole company is devastated. She's bringing in her people. And, you know, if you're not making the cup, if you're not, you know, running with it, you're getting ran over. We also see that Mr. Vanderbilt. James Vanderbeek, do 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 do. Y'all don't, I don't want, y'all don't know about it. We see him, he is head, he is all for these changes. You know, we're trying to, you know, reach the masses and the cult, formerly the culture, we're only reaching, you know, the black demographic. We're trying to go over that. And Miss Wilhelmina Zora Vanessa Williams Slater is here to get us there. And if she doesn't think you're a good fit and you're ready to rock with change, you're out of here. We also see that Anna is practically obsessed with Justin, our Jay Farrow character. She is in love. But she's gotten him on with her ideas and she's been surpassed. And he's, you know, no longer interested. But she loves her job nonetheless. Now at this point, we get introduced to Miss Kelly Rowland. Miss I get it, giving her all Janet Jackson, black cat, pleasure principle isnessness in this, you know, faux music video. Kelly looks so good. I was like, why does this sound better than her current stuff? Because she's, you know, kind of leaning back into the R&B. Kelly's pop, you know, dance floor, dance world music is bomb. Girl, stay there. But, you know, Kelly looks good. And the office women, the very earthy, pro, you know, black. My sister, we hear sister so many times in this movie. Are ranking on her. You know, look at her. She had a nose job. Look at her hair. She's changed her whole appearance. While they're ranking, Anna is in awe. Sandra, Kelly Rowland, is her idol. She loves everything about her and everything she's, you know, become, it's, you know, she's inspired her so much. And she sees in Sandra everything that she feels like she's lacking to get ahead. We're, you know, leaving the company, the boss is leaving, but with hopes of, you know, when I get on, when I get myself on and start my own station, I'm bringing all of you ladies in with me. You know, a few other ladies, in, <laughs> including Lena Waithe. And we're going to get into her. But she is just down. 
She wants so much and has so much to offer, but she's just not being heard. Not only is she not being heard, she's not being seen. Her opinion doesn't matter. She's been at this company four years and have yet to progress when she's clearly brilliant. Not only are we doing that, but we get off the bus. <laughs> sucky ass neighborhood, sucky ass apartment, sucky ass half ass attempt at having a boyfriend. Life sucks. Anna is thinking, how can I get myself out of here? Bills are due. I don't have any money. Not only do I not have any money, but I'm in jeopardy of losing my job if I don't come off a certain way. And that's just here. That's just this 1989 situation. So many women do not get ahead or get looked over solely on their appearance. Solely someone assuming because you look a certain way, you shouldn't be able to reach a certain level. Like, they, like could you even imagine just solely being passed over because of your hairstyle? or the way you dress, solely physical. So shallow, but it happens all the time. You could have all the degrees in the world, all of like, if you don't know the right people and look a certain way, <whistles> next. But the heifers are getting fired. <laughs> people are getting laid off, people are packing things and Anna is like, you know, well, you know, huh, not me. I have a dream, I have a vision of something I wanna be. I want to be a TV DJ. I want to host these countdowns and also, you know, promote my my ideas behind the scenes. So now we're called into the office to Miss Wilhelmina Slater, Zora. And Anna was prepared. I love so much that Anna was prepared here and she knew exactly what she wanted. Every question she had an answer for, she had everything laid out, documented what she wanted to see her whole entire vision. And Zora is eating it up. She's like, well, you know, I don't need another assistant. You know, you can be, you know, assistant, you know, director of Mark, whatever. And she's like, oh my God, I would love to. And I love that little pan shot where they go completely around the room with this horrific music in the background. Great. But as she's walking out, you know, who, who does your hair? Me? <laughs> and she gives her this card for Virgie's and says, you know, take my advice. You have been looked over. This is brilliant. And yet you've been looked over for four years. Go get your hair done so I can welcome you to the team. Cause you know, you little puff, it's not gonna make it. Mind you, her natural hair was beautiful. I was like, man, you give me some of that. <laughs> like, I don't know what my hair wants to do sometimes, but she had that really good in-between texture of she could, you know, wear pretty much any, everything like, her all natural afro, gorgeous. Now, we go home, you know, after we've gotten this great, you know, news, before we could even walk in, our family, our aunt and uncle, mostly uncle, are talking shit. Don't you just hate when your family's like, like man, she ain't nothing. She, like, she, she ain't never gonna be nothing. How long she, hey, didn't see you there. So you can already see like her own family doesn't see her vision, doesn't see what she sees for herself and thinks she needs to, you know, grow up, get realistic about things. Blair Underwood and all his salt and pepper, which was more salt. Blair was looking good. Like that whole little scene was kind of a blur because Blair was looking good. Okay, but, um, you know, we, we hear that the daughter, you know, she's off at school, all those great things. Meanwhile, Anna's just sitting here like, well, yeah, like, I, 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 I got a promotion. I, you know, I got me. We never actually hear, you know, what happens to Anna's biological parents, but we can see, you know, that she's loved, but she's always felt, you know, a little inadequate, not only in her workspace, but at home. But I love that, you know, particular scene because Blair took the time out to give, you know, Sis a little, a little lesson. He's brought out this kind of folklore slave uh, book and, you know, he's reading it and, you know, she's like, you guys really, you know, are diving into, you know, those superstitious nothing. It's like, hey, this is like, this is us, this is ours. 
how dare you dismiss you know certain beliefs just because you don't believe them like hey if i don't want to you know sweep the dirt out of my front door so i don't sweep by my good fortune that's my business if i don't want to split a pole that's my business if i don't want to step on a crack and break my mama's back that's my business <laughs> but feeling you know desperate at this point she lies to her aunt and says you know my rent you know has been raised you know five hundred dollars and she helps her the rent has been raised but that's not what we're using this money for Anna uses this money so desperate. Rent is overdue, like we about to get put out. The eviction notice is on the door, but we go and get our hair done because I want to fit in. I want to make it. And I'm not making it just being me. Goes into Virgie's to get her hair done. And we are introduced to Miss Laverne Cox, the hair extraordinaire. Fits her in while she's sitting there, you know, she is having these dreams she's always you know been having these like these dreams of the family kind of sitting at a table together but she's not there and i think that's how she personally feels but we get ready to install this hair we're looking at all this luxurious weave and we get that statement of honey don't worry about where it's been let's just focus on where it's going man is that all too real we do so much to our hair and I just, you know, black women, you know, a lot of women, some men, especially now, wear, you know, all kind of extensions and things like that, especially the human hair. We have no idea where it came from. No idea whose body it was on, what kind of spirits are attached to it, what kind of energy is attached to that hair, but we just put it in. Because some hair, you know, it's, you know, some hair is collected, you know, the proper way, but a lot of the times, is taken forcefully because it's so valuable here. So we don't know who went through what for us to get those luxurious, you know, virgin, ribby, human, 22 inches of goodness. We're just putting it on. But we sit in the chair and we get our first glimpse into the horror. Like, I was like, Lord. Oh, it has been a while since I've gotten, you know, anything sewn in, but you do have those moments of, uh, and it's, it's, it's torture. You know, she's being poked and prone and you get those tight because, you know, we got to lock it down. We got to lock that thickness, that coarseness down. To do that, we need those corn rolls to sew on and we got to make sure that they're tight. The tighter they are, the longer it stays. It hurts. It hurts and you're, you know, cringing and ooing and owing and that beautician. And... It's every day and you're dying, you're in pain, you have a whole headache, but you're sitting there and you're getting through it because you know the outcome is going to be so acceptable and so beautiful and make you feel so much better about yourself. At this point, she is having flashbacks of that horrible chemical burn that's in the back of her head that never went away. She is traumatized from that. She doesn't want this hair in, but she's getting it because she wants to be accepted. So badly that she faints. <laughs> she faints. Oh, the horror. But when we get up and we look into that mirror, oh, bitch. <laughs> bitch. I don't care what I just went through. I look, I look good. <laughs> now, before we leave the salon, we see, you know, this conditioner, this pink stuff that we need to maintain our hair. And we also see Miss Sandra, Miss Kelly Rowland, who is everywhere. She's on TV. She's on shows. She's on countdowns. She's, you know, making videos. She's on, you know, the cover of magazines. This is this is her idol. And she she tells her, you know, how much she idolizes her. She's like, I love you. I love the new look. I love your, well, you know, the record exec, they love it too. And she has this glare in her eyes, this possessed look. <laughs> like they're just sitting there like it's all natural. Sis look crazy. And we have Usher there. I did not care for Usher in this movie. He was just there. He wasn't really utilized much. It was like, he was just there to say, hey, there's Usher. Okay. 
But we, um, you know, we go home and we read some more about that Moss hair girl. And the story goes that the Moss hair grew from a tree on a plantation. Sis took it off the, off the tree, sewed it into her hair and killed you know masters and all of this and that with it there was so much symbolism in that particular i would love to read the little slave lore book it was so much in that book but the fact that this was ma masses this is masses hair it was referencing you know how deep this goes how deep those you know standards of beauty went and what we were considered back then and what we are still considered now as far as standards of beauty. That she felt like she needed to take that off, that straight moss and put that in her hair. We still doing it now. Symbolism. Now we get to work and Anna is praised. Some good, some bad. She's no longer walking through the office unnoticed. Not only she's, is she being noticed, but it's like, you know, damn, you, you look good. Well, damn, how do, what, what did she look like before? A foot? <laughs> but, you know, we have, you know, the, oh, you look good. You look so beautiful. Even, you know, Justin is jocking yet again when he's been, you know, ignoring her, treating her like an ugly stepchild for the whole film. We see, you know, our first glimpse of the hair. We, you know, getting, you know, we get that, you know, that first pat. Cause you know, it's, it's gonna be a little tight. So we gotta, we don't wanna really, you know, we don't wanna scratch it, we don't wanna mess it up. We just pat. We got, you know, those tough migraines, but you know, we are in the meeting and we have Zora telling the company, this is what it is. We're in the midst of a change. Everything that you were used to doing before, those goddamn Anita, you give good love, countdowns. We ain't doing it no more. It's a new thing. The ladies are not down. I'm like, you know, we fought too hard to be who we are. You're just going to come here and change everything? And she's, you know, upset a little bit at first because she doesn't, you know, immediately co-sign. She's like, you know, Anna, what the hell was that? Like, you know, well, I didn't know what me inviting you in. This, this was the message. Are you going to give me that position, you know, that DJ, that front and center that I want? And she tells her, maybe I have to see all the candidates. I have to see everything, even though this was Anna's idea. Now, Anna goes home and, you know, we get a glimpse into, you know, her sister. I do not know her name, but the actress who was playing her sister, she has been in some really good things. She was in uh, Roxanne the Roxanne Shante Netflix movie and in um, the horrible, uh, what the hell was that? With Issa, Issa, whatever that was with Issa and they were supposed to be in love with Lakeith and it was awkward, that movie. She was in that, she's good. But you know, she comes to, you know, support her sister and you know, brings her a little memorabilia. You remember you was, you know, so, wanted to be a DJ and you were getting on my nerves as we were kids. And we still see her lying. Anna is still lying. Anna is embarrassed. She's embarrassed about where she is in life to the point that she's still lying to her sister and her family about Justin being her boyfriend when he doesn't even acknowledge her. He simply acts like she was a, and that was it. But as she's leaving, we see the same drunk, gross landlord. And you know, Anna, she, oh, let, me, let me get you your money. No, simply because she couldn't pay before or she was late on this gentrification increase, this made up increase, he's expecting sex as payment because you know, we're black and we, we do stuff like that. <laughs> but as he's, you know, attacking her, she stabs him, leaving an open wound and her hair latches onto it and sucks him bone dry. The hair was hungry. Cause I was, I didn't know what they were going with it because the hair had ate some ketchup before. And I was like, if it's just hungry girl, like just, just give it a burger or something. No, <laughs> the hair was thirsty for blood and it got some. And of course, because this was the eighties Anna just threw that body on out the window and didn't, didn't think twice about it. <laughs> you know, the forensics weren't what they are now. Like, oh, let's just throw that out. 
We leave to get ready to go to work the next day. And, you know, collectively, we were in front of the apartment building and we see, you know, a number of black women like, you know, he tried to do the same thing to me. Not to all the residents, just the black women. Like, if you can't eat, even, you know, a woman call, you know, calls him uh, or a word and calls him disgusting. Like, this is what he was doing in the building. And it just walks off all casual. I love that we got the Nicole Breyer. If you guys ever watch Netflix, um, gosh, what is that? What is that where they make the food and it's funny as fuck, it's horrible. Um, nailed it. West. Nicole is hilarious. I loved her here as the, you know, the neighbor. But, you know, we get to work and she's still meant to, you know, pull these other women I love that woman that woman who was standing in her stance like this is who I am I thought too hard to be who I am to give it up and change now just because you want things to look a certain way but you see Anna has been put on her no pull her in we need her we want her here but not the way she is we need her to change we're going through a change and we see that every day within corporate situations because, you know, the others may not want to approach you, don't know how to approach you. But we're going to get our fellow sis sister, hey sister, you know, go talk to her and tell her what she needs to do and what we want her to know. It'll sound better coming from you. Go do that. And even though Anna is horrified and scared of her own hair and what she's becoming, she goes to this woman and, you know, hey, hey girl, go ahead, come on, come on. Why are you tripping? It's just, it's just for a little while. We're just changing who we are for a little while. It doesn't change who we are inside. We can go back. When in actuality, you can never really go back once you've changed yourself for something else, especially in the workplace. You're going to be expected to be that all the time. But we, you know, have also seen Anna's former boss who said, you know, I'm going to come back for you girls. She's called Anna repeatedly. Anna has not returned her calls. Anna is settled. She has seen a glimpse of opportunity of what she could possibly have that hasn't been physically given to her yet. You don't have that title that you want yet. Yes, you're helping more. Yes, you're, you know, your opinions are being heard. Yes, you have a position here, but not as that video countdown DJ. But she's ignored her. We cut to, you know, some time going by and everything is set and ready to go. Anna's idea has been put into motion. And all the girls that she wanted to follow suit, who weren't and didn't want to change, they have. Anna is Miss Popular at this party. Once again, we get a glimpse into Justin, who this entire movie has been sleeping with Zora and kind of getting privileges there, even though he's a whole little asshole and just, you know, kind of weeks his way between women <laughs> but um we get another appearance from usher mm. hold, hold on why am i skipping that before the party we get a scene of because you know the hair is kind of getting away from her it's getting you know it gets back tame when she when, when it's fed the hair drinks her period blood it's just this never happened. What? <laughs> I don't know what kind of shit that happened. <laughs> but we get another appearance from Usher and he is just there. And I thought we were going to get more into that because he's like, you know, have you ever been back to that salon? I've noticed, you know, since Sandra Witt, she's becoming a bit different. And I thought he was going to, you know, play a bit. That's like a main pet peeve I have with the family. Why is Usher there? Why? But she's too busy, you know, entertaining, you know, her public. And she, you know, the former boss comes back. She comes to, you know, see what's going on. And she sees the change that has happened, the change in her team, the change in the entire building, the company, the culture, the cult. And Anna is feeling herself. Rightfully so. It's like, you know, whatever you have to say, I can't, you know... Everybody doesn't want to, you know, rock with the team and take one for the sisters. I mean, I want to downgrade where I am, what I can afford myself to come be with you and start over. I have a position here. 
And it's something that you couldn't provide for me. And you probably can't provide for me now because you couldn't do it for me for four years. And she's like, okay, but I have my integrity. What all did you have to sacrifice to get what you have? But Anna got that attitude, girl. At this point, Wilhelmina Zora Slater is fed up. Like, you you know, I see you, see you, you floating around here. I'm out of here. I'm ready to go. Now, you notice beforehand when she was, you know, telling her, you know, it's kind of hard to tame their hair. It's, it's not enough, is it? Enough what, Vanessa Williams? You know something? At that point, I was like, oh, it's everybody's hair. It's not just Kelly Rowland's hair. It's not just Anna's hair. It's not just Zora's hair. All you bitches here? Everyone who went to Virgie's got some hungry weave. Oh. But it was all in reference to what all you have to sacrifice. Like yourself, you're sacrificing yourself to meet a certain standard, someone else's stand standards just to fit in. Like you're willing to feed this hair just to keep it, just to fit in. Kind of, it's, it's just it's just hair sister it's just hair <laughs> but she leaves you know feeling like he ruined something and uh she was smoking the shit out of those cigarettes remember in the 80s all those movies everybody was smoking a cigarette you could just smoke in the open air without a problem there was no such thing as secondhand smoke <laughs> but um you know they go home and she kind of gets another thing that she wanted. She always fantasized of him wanting her that way and being that man and getting back to his place and waking up in his bed. And this is when we get the first murder. I like the way that this it was performed because it was a sex scene, but it was so tasteful. You didn't really see anything. But, you know, she blinds, but like he had a whole drawer. I'm like, oh, you a ho-ho. <laughs> had a whole drawer of knickknacks and patty wax. And, you know, she's, you know, told me I'm the best, tell me I'm this, and stabs him. So, you know, well, what? Why, why did you leave? Sucks him bone dry. I was like, oh, there is no coming back for this, from this. Anna is done. And he's like low-key a murderer now, possessed or not. You murdered your half-ass boyfriend. At this point, Anna is distraught. Not only did we kill Justin, but before that, we found out that Miss Sora has been planning to take that DJ countdown position off of herself and kind of pull it from underneath Anna. Meanwhile, we see Dawson's Creek floating around, operating, puppeteering everyone. Yeah, of course, this is awesome, you're great. Telling everyone what they need to hear, you know, like corporate people do. But her sister tells her, she was giving me all Roxanne Chantel on that phone, like I thought she was about to rap. I thought she was about to rap. I love her voice. But she tells her that at the end of the folklore, the hair completely possesses the uh, the person that it's attached to until the witch take is, takes over the body fully. And she sees a truck with a symbol on it. Scared, Anna goes to the salon to take this hair out. And we're thinking we found peace in a moment of silence. Just for a second. Cause you know, at this point, we've killed two people. Horrible people, you know, I, I like how we were made kind of not to care. Like, hey, Justin, Justin's a, an asshole, he's a hoe. The landlord was kind of real rapey and it don't matter. <laughs> but she goes and, you know, tries to get this hair taken out by the beautician, by, what's, what's I say it again? I said it before, move out the way when I'm coming through the door. Me, heavy, as light as a rock, guys, watch. Even some of the girls shock. Step back, it ain't that type of party. No refining if you ain't somebody. Get out. Okay, okay. It was like was the beautician, y'all. <laughs> but she's trying to get it taken out, and we see Edna, the old boss again. And she apologized. She's like, I'm so sorry, I got caught up. And we're thinking, you know, we're finding a moment. Like, all right, Anna, you know, own up to it, girl. You don't need this weave. Weave, threatened by being taken out, attacks all three women, killing them and suck, even at another boss, sucking them dry in this salon. At this point, I was like, all right, I can, I can, I'll let you slide. Well, you know, just throwing that body in a dumpster. Maybe, you know, be a couple of days, 
depending on, you know, Justin's. And I don't see it because Justin was very prominent in the company. So somebody's going to go, you know, be looking for him to find his body. Now you just suck these three women. Where is the the witnesses? Where is the logic? Move, not saying move was bad, but I was like, all right, this is five people. And no police came looking for Anna? None? But hey, what that kind of movie? <laughs> Sucks them dry. Like, she couldn't even take it out. The hair was threatened. <laughs> but we, you know, are scared. We get back to that, you know, um, to that building because she remembers what Zora said before. It's like, let me find somebody I can relate to who can help me. Like, girl, you could have talked to anybody in here besides homegirl who got her actual hair, you know, straightened and was rocking her natural, straightened. Everybody had went to, you know, Virgie's. Like you seen, you know, her friend after, you know, she was kind of turning like, oh girl, it hurt, it's, it hurt, it hurt, Ooh, it's thirsty, it's ruining my life. It's cute though, right? I look good, I look good. <laughs> but goes to look for Zora. Like girl, you could have called anybody. <laughs> and Zora is looming in the back with her glowing eyes. And another, you know, sister has been sucked bone dry. And she's like, oh, you too? Yeah, me too. Bitch, you killing people too? We know the hair. Not, not me. It's thirsty, right? Yeah, it's just hair. We, we good. I mean, I, let's just cut it off. Proceeds to cut the hair off. The hair strangles. Wilhelmina, Vanessa, Zora. Strang a whole hair strangles her. Bam. Dead. We see how far these women are willing to go just to keep this hair. Just to keep their positions. Like this hair is literally killing you and killing people, trying to possess you. They're trying to take over us. They're trying to take over us. They're trying to pull us into who they are, those European features and that straight hair. They are trying to take over us and we are letting them. We are perceiving those things and taking them inward and saying, this is what it is. This is who I have to be. When in actuality, you can be whoever you are. Whoever you choose to. Straight hair, nappy hair, afro, ball fade, whatever. We're all beautiful. But Anna has pretty much ran out of, you know, people to turn to. She goes to Blair. Looking like Blair. I don't even know. He's his uncle, whatever. He is Blair. Blair. But, you know, he... um kind of gives her history lessons on hair and it being, you know, connected to a certain person and in their culture, their spirits are carried with the hair and it's kind of, you know, in connection with the, the moss tree hair. And she figures out, you know, there is something, duh, there is something connected to this hair. This is why I can't cut it off. This is why, you know, people are being sucked dry. I was like, did we really need this scene? You know what's going on. Now, at this point, we're, you know, into the end of the movie. And this is when things seem to kind of get away from the writers and the director just a little bit. Not saying that it was bad, but a lot of things started to happen. But, um, you know, she thinks she get some type of you know answers from her uncle I'm like that's not gonna help anything bitch you need to get this hair out <laughs> but she um goes to the office like ain't nobody looking for these people ain't nobody looking for none of these people that you women are around here killing because all of you have your hair done by the same person the same kind of weave that's sucking people dry yet we're all just you know coming to work all cash have you seen such and such no Okay, but you want to do these videos? <laughs> At that point, she has a second thought of maybe walking outside in the rain. Because we all know too well whether it's human hair, sew in, quick weave, 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 braids. Uh, you might get a little, little lenient with braids. Your natural straightened hair. You can't get it wet. Once your hair gets wet, 
once your hair gets wet, you could sit and get you can never get it back the way that it was once it's wet like wet air rain and humidity kryptonite your hair's done but before she could even do that or even acknowledge you know what's going on and have you seen zora hey she's not here you want to come do these videos Hell yeah, I've always wanted to do that. I just killed a couple of people, but yeah, bitch, let's go put me on. <laughs> she goes and hosts and we get another cameo, you know, does a bomb job. We get, you know, more Kelly Rowland. I was thinking with, you know, Kelly being there, she would have a more dominant, you know, situation here. I thought, I thought Kelly was in game. I was not, I thought, you know, Kelly was going to be this big beaming ball of you know catastrophic demonic hair which but no it was zora who comes back and for whatever reason nobody sees her except for anna and she's going and wheezing her way through the office and snatching and pull. i was like what is going on like the film was, you know, wacky and kooky and about, you know, bad hair. And then it like kind of started to get away towards the end. I understood it, but stuff was just moving. But, um, a fight happens. She's, you know, snatching people, sucking them dry, killing people at her leisure. Um, there's a whole office building of women, you know, like hibernating with their hair. With, you know, a caution sign. I'm like, is this where you guys have been meeting this whole time? Has everybody known about each other's hair? And have you guys been collecting bodies together? Where are you guys going with this? But um, we even see Lena Waithe. She's sitting there amongst, you know. I was like, okay, well. Hmm. But as she's running, she's run she runs back into, you know, Lena Waithe's character. Who was funny here? For the most part, she was really funny and, you know, brought some comedy, especially towards the end when we needed it because the story got a little... Hmm? <laughs> and she's just funny. And, um, but she says, you know, I was just, you know, sitting in there trying to blend in with these, you know, zombie fuckers. Like, you know, why pay 500 when you can get it for the low for 250 Like, it was funny, but... It logically didn't make sense. Like, wouldn't, especially with um, Anna being, you know, so far off into, you know, her hair, wouldn't she be just as possessed as uh, Vanessa Williams' character and the ladies who were in the in the room? Like, what? But okay. Um, <laughs> Lena Waithe, you know, for all that she was to the character. And we seen, you know, Vanessa sucking everybody dry, like instantly, but Lena Wave had time. Hey, bitch, help me, save me. Like it was comedy gold, but get me out of here. Like, oh my God, kill us out of what gosh wait no. This ain't no Jason Voorhees situation. We don't need to see the bitch die. Let's go. You weren't sucked dry. You just were pulled out and Anna had time to get a shoe and Okay. Story got a little little away towards the end yet she is still murdered in the um by the elevator i'm like well wouldn't anna be just as bad to want to murder her with her thirsty hair how is everybody else hair so much thirstier than anna's why does she still have control why is she still not you know not as as taken over as the rest of her team you know she's running around and trying to get away and running literally running from from this hair that's going through every crack and you know, turns on the fire alarm system. Cause you know, when stuff is shit is hitting the fan again, she's like, well, if I'm about to, you know, die, even though I could attack them with my hair, I should have a smoke, right? But decides, you know, to get those sprinklers to go in and has time to cut and attack that, attack her hair back and get it out of her head. Whereas the other women, they were just left kind of sizzling. Like, were they just too far gone to... I thought they were going to come back. I thought it was going to be like, okay, yeah, they're down. Let me get the hair off of them. And everybody will just, you know, come back just like Anna did. But they were dead. 
Okay. We end the movie with Anna kind of going back to her former self and her moving out of her apartment. I was like, did she get a new job? Is she running from the cops? Because is nobody going to jail? <laughs> but no, she just moves and she moves back into the family home. And they tie up the story with um, the bodies, you know, her reading, you know, the rest of the Moss Haired Girl story. And the bodies kind of being taken away and taken back to this plantation that is ran by Dawson. I wish they would have implemented a little bit more of him being in the movie. So, or, you know, his, you know, character kind of being really, really like overly, overly nice. So that ending would have been jarring, like, oh, it's been you the whole time. Of course, I did not know that it was him or he was, you know, a, descend a descendant of, you know, the slave master. It has been, you know, getting his hair out to the masses and, you know, incorporating it into his own business but it still wasn't um of an ending and you know we're left with her sister going you know i'm about to you know go to virgie's and give me some hair girl because this creamy crack is, is done and it's you know it's, it's left you know to tell the audience you know this is a never-ending cycle this what are we gonna do we can't get people to stop wearing weave <sighs> goes off now I did enjoy this movie. I did enjoy the message that it was trying to convey. I understood it very well. I'm gonna give this movie a six out of 10. Now, though I did, you know, I did, I enjoyed it for what it was. It was just so many things that could have been better. Um, I didn't like, you know, character just being there just to be there, just to kind of name drop. Like, ooh, look, it's Kelly Rowland. Ooh, look, it's Usher. Ooh, look, it's MC Light. Ooh, look, it's Lena White. Like, people were just there. I did love the music that I had, you know, even the, the fake music, the mock 80s music, that was even good. Kelly Rowland's song, that was good. The music, I heard a little guy. You know, we got a little, you know, um, new edition a couple of songs in there it was very 80s i love the uh most of the costuming the hair even though it was for the 80s i wish that the hair would have looked a little better like the lace was real did you see like with um anna's character it was like her hair wasn't all the way down like, did y'all actually braid it and, you know, put that in? Because it seemed like it was a little conish at times. Like, y'all couldn't put that down? Um, but for the most part, I did like the movie. Would I watch it again? Mm, maybe. I don't know. Do I think you guys should watch it? Yes, I do. I do think you guys should. Well, I'm hoping if you watched this whole review that you did, you did watch the film. Um... Please drop down in the comments and let me know how you felt about the film. If you feel like I missed anything, if you feel like the references that I think I got were wrong, if you if you agree with them, if you feel like I should have gave the film a higher rating, let me know those things. Thank you for watching this video. I see you guys next time. Bye.